All right, hello, fun, and welcome back to Cut Above Space Program, where today we are having a look at the CEDA Athon Interplanetary Transport System mod, which is being made by form user Kerbo Nerd. And what this glorious little piece of fork looks at into the game is a lovely new transport ship based off of the SpaceX Starship. Now, this is certainly not meant to be a direct copy of the Starship, but is definitely inspired by, and it is pretty darn cool. So let's uh, jump right on into the vehicle assembly building and have a look at what we do get here. And now, as for dependencies on this one, we're in luck, though it does have two, one being the usual module manager and the other being the B9 part switch mod. They thankfully come pre-packaged in the download from the mod page, so you don't have to worry about hunting around for every anything, which which is always nice to get. And with it installed, you can have a look at the parts, and the first is a pretty nice one, and it is the Athon Carbon Reinforced Command Module. Now, this is, of course, a manned command module with a minimum of two crew members to operate and a max crew capacity of 15 with a built-in data transmitter reaction wheel the usual crew report and a battery holding 3200 electric charge and if we pop it on here you can see it is quite a large command pod because i mean of course it is it holds 15 kerbals and is pretty good looking a nice taper to it some decent texturing not quite stock alike, but pretty darn close. And so I very much do enjoy it. And all these windows do light up very nicely, making it look pretty darn good when you are out there in space. The one downside is the internal view. It does have one, but it's currently recycling the internal view from the Mark 1-3 command pod here. So, nothing custom. Hopefully that comes in time. I don't know if it will or not, but I would personally like to see one. But, until then, oh well. What are you going to do? It's still a nice, a gigantic pod. Now, on to the next that we have. If you don't want to have a lot of crew, we have the unmanned version in the Athon Carbon Reinforced cargo pod and that's also the last time i'm going to mention the uh carbon reinforced part as that's literally in the name of every part so uh yeah there we go now this one is of course an unmanned command pod with a built-in data transmitter this time an sas rather than a reaction wheel and a much smaller battery with electric charge of only 500 and if we pop it on top here i guess you can see well, it's, I mean, it's just the bottom one without any windows and two little nubbins right there. Overall, a pretty cool part that can open. And yeah, that's that's the best part. If you were wondering why it didn't hold like a lot of materials, especially with the tiny battery, it's it's because of this. You can just put whatever you want in there. And that is beautiful. That's it's going to hold a lot of stuff inside that and that that's a pretty great thing. So let's pop both of these off and have a look at the next part that we do have here which doesn't have anything to do with command and control but it does hold some kerbals and that is the Athon airlock and it's an airlock that holds two kerbals inside of it and if you take a look here it you know just kind of fits flat against any surface and yeah somehow squishes two kerbals into the interior of that thing <laughs> i like it it is good looking and i do actually really like the i mean it's the same texture we do have on the larger pods here but i don't know for some re reason on the smaller door with the windows i like the carbon fiber sort of texturing there more for some reason that's just me being weird though i think now let's pop that thing off and head down to the fuel tanks category where we got a couple of parts. The first one being a cargo container going by the name of the Athon Cargo Container. It's a fun one though, holding a lot of ore and holding in total 6,220 of it. And out of the different things in the fuel tank category, it's probably my favorite one because just look at that. That is a cool looking model with all these little panels all over the thing. It is a pretty darn cool. The uh, remaining three proper fuel tanks are much more just sort of solid cylinders. They do have some piping along the side, but I like all the detailing that is in this one compared to those and it's just a nice ore container 
Now, as for the next three parts, they all have the exact same identical name, so I'm gonna look at them all at the same time. And they are the Athon Cryogenic Tanks. I almost said the Carbon Reinforced part because I'm just reading the names. But yes, they come in three different sizes, either a large, medium, or small, and all of them will hold either liquid fuel and oxidizer, or just liquid fuel, with the smallest one holding 1,890 liquid fuel and 2,310 oxidizer, or 4,210, or just liquid fuel, and the largest one holding, oh boy, a lot, with 14,510 liquid fuel, 17,740 oxidizer, or just 32,200 liquid fuel. And they are some very, very large tanks here. That's the big one. We got the uh, medium one there, all of which can be attached radially or, of course, uh, in line with their attachment nodes. And, yeah, are just good, gigantic tanks. Who wouldn't want that? Now, after that, we have two engines in the engine category. Again, both identically named. So, hopefully, that changes for a little bit more uniqueness in the names. But the first one is the Athon Engine Cluster, and it's a big one, and will produce a maximum of 11,500 kilonewtons of thrust with an ISP of 385 using liquid fuel and oxidizer, and has a gimbling range of 4 degrees. And as you can see here, it's a pretty good looking large engine with just a beautiful cluster of things. And all in all, it has some really good detailing. I even like the extra attention to detail on, like, these little bits here on the top. Because, I mean, that's something you're never really going to see because it's just going to be plopped under a fuel tank. But I, I like the detail. Very good. Now, the next is, of course, the identically named Athon Engine Cluster. This one, though, has two different engine modes. The first one producing for you 9,850 kilonewtons of thrust with an ISP of 385 using liquid fuel and oxidizer. Uh, but you can go a little bit more economical if you only want 3,600 kilonewtons of thrust with an ISP of 455, still using that liquid fuel and oxidizer. And again, like with the previous engine having a gimbling range of four degrees. And you can see here, this one's a bit more of a protected engine cluster. Uh, you know, not just being exposed to the elements there, fitting nicely in a line. So very good looking. And I do like the two different modes where you can either go full power or of course the much more economical thing if you're using it, of course, in say orbit, good times. Now, after that, we've got nothing in command and control, but in structural, we have the Athon engine mount. So if you have your own engines and don't want to use one of the existing engine clusters, well, you can just pop this thing on. And as you can see here, it uh, slaps on pretty nice and can hold well, quite a few engines there. Nine in total with, uh, of course, an attachment point for each, which is always nice. So you do have the option of using your own or, of course, even stock engines with this thing. Now let's pop this baby off and head down to the next category in coupling, where we have the Athon engine mount coupler, which is a decoupler with an ejection force of 200. And if we just pop it on, there is, yeah, just a very large decoupler where we've got a more flat end here and then a more inset end. Perfect for, of course, using with one of the engine clusters there or even the engine mount where you put your own in. So you got a nice little bit in there protecting the engines, keeping them safe. All in all, a good decoupler. Now, the final two parts are down here in aerodynamic, as we have nothing else in payload, ground, thermal, electrical, communication, science, cargo, or utility. Now, we may get some landing legs soon in ground, but at, at the time of uh, making this video, we end here in the aerodynamic category with two parts. The first being the Athon Actuated Aero Canard, which is 
control surface with a relative wing area of 1 with a max deflection of 20 degrees, actuator speed of 30 degrees per second, and is just, you know, a nice little wing, or well, rather, canard, for you to use. A very good thing there. And, well, as with all the parts in this, quite large, but not as large as, oh boy, our last part, the Athon Aero winglet. Now this is a control surface with a wing area of 3.49 with a max deflection of 25 degrees, actuator speed of 35 degrees per second. It's also a lifting surface with a relative wing area of a 5 for that. And as you can see it's it's big. It's real big. This is a gigantic wing, but you know, perfect for controlling a gigantic vessel. And that, uh, yeah, that's it for all the various parts here. So if we do load up a uh, simple craft I made with all this earlier, my Athon vessel here, eh, it's a pretty simple one. We've got a two-stage thing going on here where we've got one of the medium tanks, which, you know, of course, we got on the liquid fuel and oxidizer rather than just the liquid fuel. We've got the uh, engine cluster with the internally protected engines of there. Uh, and then down here, the other engine cluster with the more external engines. All in all, a pretty cool thing. So let's sure load it up with people and then head on out to the launch pad. Now, my one sort of, I don't really want to say complaints because they're just minor things and this is the first release of this, so hopefully we get them in time, is of course, as I mentioned, an internal view for this would be great. Uh, a nose cone actually would be nice too. It's a close enough size that some other stock nose cones can kind of work with it, but you know, it's not, they don't fit quite right. Uh, but other than that though, this is a great little mod that I've definitely been enjoying and it's, well, super big rocket parts with a lot of power for you to really put a lot of stuff into orbit, whether it be with the unmanned cargo one or, of course, with the uh, Kerbal Crude version we've got here, you could uh, send a lot of payload into the sky. Which is fairly easy with the power of these uh, gigantic freaking engines that I adore. I mean, they are super powerful, surprisingly not as loud as I thought they would be, again, considering uh, the power of these things. But all in all, it is a fun set of parts with a lot of great little bits and bobs, cool features for you to put stuff on other planets. So if you'd like to have a look at this mod for yourself, which I would certainly recommend you go and do, you can have a look at the link in the description as per usual. But that, my friends, is gonna be it for this one today. Hopefully you all have enjoyed and yet do come back for the next episode when hopefully We'll be having a look at yet another wonderful mod. But until that time, thank you for watching. And as always, have a good one.